And uh, welcome to day four of Refreshers Week. Uh, I'm here today with uh, Rosie Ivans. Almost said her name wrong there, but didn't. So um, hello to Rosie. Hello, Jason. Thank you for getting my name right. I know. I, I Good start. Only oh, because you told me. <laughs> told you I'd laugh about it. Uh, so Rosie is on with us this morning. She is a mental health and wellbeing team leader, recently appointed in November last year, and works on the student services team. So what we'll take this opportunity this morning, have a really sort of nice, relaxed conversation um, to make Rosie feel at ease on this uh, on this channel and also myself. As you can see, I'm from home this morning, so nice and relaxed, not in the office just yet. And we're going to talk about her role, uh, hopefully a little bit about her background as well, uh, find out what motivates her and what, what makes her want to do the work that she does. Um, and then just have a general a chat about what that role involves, uh, how it's going to look moving forward, and the sort of link between my team and uh, Rosie's team and some of the other teams. I think that's where we're going to take the chat today, Rosie. Sounds good. So I'll just hand over you first of all, just to kind of introduce yourself and maybe give us a bit of your background to start with. Sure, yeah. So like Jason says, I am Rosie Ivins, pronounced correctly, so well yep. done. Uh, I am the newly appointed mental health and wellbeing team leader. Um, I'm right now I'm at Gardine, um, at the Gardine campus. I tend to split my working week between our Broth campus and Gardine, um, although you might see me um, kicking about the Kingsway at times. Um, so it's it's cross campus my role, um, and I have been in like I say since the start of November. Mm -hmm. um, I actually transferred from a, a previous role within the college. Um, I was working within the student services team, student services officer. I was doing a part time role there, yeah. um, but I'd been brought in to um, support students with their mental health and well being, uh, particularly after the impact of COVID. Um, and trying to get students back in and engaged in learning. So I was absolutely loving the, the, the work I was doing there. And then when this opportunity came up, um, it felt right. It suited my, my background, my training um, and my experience. So, um, yeah, I was I felt absolutely delighted to have been offered it. And, um, yeah, the college are, are putting that commitment behind a, a full-time post to, to help us get it right for student and staff mental health and well-being i think i think that's a really important point there is that you know this, this has been a full-time role that's been created that's just dedicated to the you know the mental health and well-being of, of students it's, it's a student role uh, in terms of like you're working exclusively with the students on yeah. this which i think is, it, it really says something in, in that respect as well and i do remember before christmas we had a, we had a good meeting at the garden office and I think it was like over an hour and we realised, oh, well, we've just got lost in conversation because it's so you are genuinely so approachable. I certainly found that. Um, so I'm sure any student will, will find the same as well. And I think having that nature, having that approachability is key in a role like yours. Um, we're obviously going to have a conversation around what that role involves, but I believe you split it between one-to-one uh, -one sort of one-to-one uh, -one work with students and also more of a... A, is there a managerial role of the other councillors and things as well involved? Yeah, that so there's, there's, you're right, Jason, there's different elements to my role. Um, and obviously, with it being a new role, we're still kind of mapping that out. Um, mm -hmm. But um, sort of, I suppose the three or possibly four key areas are that, um, as you say, yes, I do, I do like manage um, a team. We've got um, a team of wonderful councillors yeah. at the Angus College. Um, so my role is to, to oversee them. Um, and um, we we meet regularly. We look at the cases and referrals that we have coming in, um, making sure that the right students are going to the right counsellors and receiving yeah. the right support. So that's um, um, a really key part of my role. Um, in addition to that, I do also meet with young people and students myself. Mm -hmm. So um, I have a, a background in youth work um, and it's um, it's always, I feel, a real privilege when young people let you in, when they feel that they want to open up and they want to talk. Um, yeah. it, um, young people and students come to see me for all different kinds of reasons. Um, it tends to be more to do with their mental health and well-being um, and how, how I can help them with these sessions. So they might come and see me once a week, could be once a fortnight. Sometimes it's online check-ins. It looks and feels very different to each student, but we always make sure it's very much needs-led and it's, yeah. um, we keep the, you know, the, the student at the centre of that process. And that's so that they can feel in control and they can feel that they're... Um, they're, um, they're, they're really sort of paving out their, their own journey, as it were. Um, 
And then the other part of my role is to look at um, the kind of development of, of the service. Um, we know that the, the college has, has a commitment to uh, the well, uh, well, mental health and wellbeing um, for students and staff. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually one of the strategic pledges that the college have put in place. So, yeah. as you see, I think the fact that they, they have um, put um, a full time post behind this shows that the, the college are committed to getting it right and Absolutely. to looking at what, what the offering is. See, there's an amazing um, um, wide range of work that is already happening within the college. Within mm -hmm. You know the department you're in, um, uh, learner engagement, the student association, yeah, um, um, LDR, the learning and development resources team. So it's looking at what we have, looking at what's working really well, if there are any gaps, um, and and basically bringing bringing these um, sort of guidelines and policies, um, and and the bringing these to life and making them very relevant and relatable to students. So it's yeah, they're, they're different days see me doing different things. Um, yeah, but I mean every every part of that kind of it joins up in itself as well because it's like what you were saying. Some amazing work going on within like student services, learner engagement, LDR, uh, students association. All these, it's like it's bring, They almost need somebody to come in like yourself to bring all help to bring all this stuff together. And I believe you're talking about like having like a cross committee uh, across departments as well, so that learning can actually be shared and kind of be consistent for the audience that's going out to. Absolutely. So yeah, we're we're um, in the process of um, uh, arranging our, our first meet. So it's mm -hmm. uh, a cross college committee, which at this stage is um, different members of staff from different departments mm -hmm. and coming together again to see to, to look at, at what we have, what is um, what is out there, um, and and maybe what we need to develop further. And that's really where we're going to be looking to students um, and wider staff. Um, is to look at people coming in to set up what we would call working groups. So these yeah. might have certain themes. So they might be um, related to people's real life experiences um, or, or, or it might be that you have a certain background or certain training and things, or like I say, just that it's it's something that is relevant and real to you um, because we know that um, all our students come from different walks of life. Everybody comes to learn at different stages. Yep. Um, and it's really important that we, we, we recognise that, but also that we learn because our students um, are, are, are able to teach us so much. And it's about us listening and getting that right. And, and like you say, joining up the different amazing work that's going on across the college. Um, and I'm still learning too, you know, it's like a same thing. So yeah. it's been wonderful to, to find out all these amazing things that are happening and how we can share and celebrate them. And there, and there is so much as well, there really is. Um, and I mean, th this this uh, thing today, it's, it's all about you, um, and we can speak about all the amazing work that's going on, but I'm keen to get to know you a little bit, and the audience are as well, because you have mentioned a couple of things about your background in youth work and, and things like that. Now, doing a role like what I do, what you do, and what, what our team generally do, you know, you're essentially helping people, you know? so. What is it that motivates somebody like yourself? What is it that, that gets you out of bed in the morning? What what is that thing that makes you want to do your job? Well, what quite literally gets me out of bed in the morning <laughs> is my seven year old man yeah. <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, he's a wonderful wake up. Uh, I love yeah. walk. Um, but no, in terms of what motivates me is. I know it maybe sounds quite simplistic, but it is people, and it's making these connections and mm -hmm. seeing that people um, reach their potential. Um, I was born, brought up in Dundee. I went to school at Harris Academy. I studied at Dung Dundee and Angus College when, yeah. well, actually, when Melrose Terrace campus was there. So I'll probably showed my age a bit. I was about to say I've not heard of that. One. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's over. I think actually Dundee United use it as their car park now, so it's, right. uh, it doesn't exist. But it was a campus I went and did. Um, Oh, goodness me, it was an NC in special care and education. Um, I always had an interest in working with people, uh -huh. particularly people that um, maybe were either at a disadvantage or maybe that had an extra sort of challenge um, yeah. to, to becoming the best versions of themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so I went on from there and went to, to Dundee Uni. It was actually based at Gardine, so it was when the Gardine building, which is now the, the college, but it yeah. was part of the university at the time. And like I say, I studied um, um, community learning and development, which is really about working with people to empower them. So it's yeah. giving them a voice. It's making them uh, help them to, to overcome any challenges or difficulties to become the best versions of themselves and to 
to kind of li live these successful and, and happy lives. So what mo motivates me is actually connecting with people, getting out yeah. there. Um, I've been so lucky in that I've done various jobs um, in Dundee, always working with young people and, and students. Um, and it's like I always say, it's a real privilege when people let you in and that they, you can form that connection and that trust. And um, I'd like to think people find me quite approachable and that they can come and have these conversations and start to open up. And it, I think it's just there's a real there's a real kind of um, a real power there when you see that in people. They think, actually, I am capable and I can do this. And I suppose ultimately it's about making a difference. And I know we yeah. all see that all want to make a difference, but it doesn't have to be um, have to be big grand gestures. It can be very, very simple things that we do, like just like say connecting with people, being being kind, being just, supportive. Just seeing that development, eh, Rosie. Like I mean, I can I can relate to that in a degree as well. You know, with the after hours club that I run, having run it now for for quite some time. Um, someone that joined it last year, the difference in them seeing them this year is just worlds apart now i'm not saying it's all down to after hours but there's other things they're engaging with in the college as well but just seeing that overall development of someone you mm -hmm. know who's maybe come on to after hours because they've they've been referred from student services for example because it's an idea you know it's a good social interaction club and they've come along they've flourished they've now got a dozen mates and they're a completely different person to the little guy or girl that walked into you having you know issues around social anxiety 12 months ago and it's that rounded approach, and I, I've got to agree with you that that that's massively motivating to see to see that in someone, you know, to see, to see that difference in someone, and to see like I wrote down the best version of yourself because I know it's in your language. A couple of times you did say that, so it's obviously something that's in your mind there uh, yeah. to be the best version of yourself. Uh, and that is, is that what you strive to be? Then is that is that your personal mantra? Is to try and be the best version of you that you can be. Yeah, well, I'll always try and whether we're yeah. reaching it or not. Um, it's, yeah, it's... I, uh, I've, I've always been somebody that um, has been, I suppose, uh, quite outwardly um, confident and, yeah. and I'm happy to sort of speak up and to, to find my voice. Um, but have maybe, you know, in the background, not always felt that. And I think that's something that I do try and, and, and remember is that I've been on my own journey and, yeah. maybe, you know, have um, maybe doubted myself and, and, and maybe my self-esteem wasn't really what I was putting out there. So for me, it's about trying to sort of see through certain behaviours and certain the way people show up in the world is... And, and yeah. what they give out is not always really the true version of <laughs> I, I totally get it. No, you're, you're absolutely right. And it's, it's weird to chat uh, just before this call about that. And I think it's so endearing, that quality as well. It's like, you know, inside, like I was saying to you, I'm still a wee guy from Blue Gowrie. That's still, <laughs> who, that's still who I am inside. You know, people might uh -huh. go, oh, yeah, he's outwardly confident. He doesn't get, I get the fear before these types of calls every single time. Like, you know, it doesn't matter how confident you are. Mm -hmm. If you don't get nervous before going live on anything, it, have you stopped caring as much maybe? I don't know. That's what I think. I, I've heard, you know, singers like who have done thousands of concerts say they still get nervous before they go on stage. I think that's because it matters. Yeah, because it matters. The thing is that I, uh, I think I, I, I suppose what motivates me as well, and 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 what makes me me is that I am I am passionate about things, and I'm yeah. not to show that. And I think you know I, I like to, to to you know to ask about being the best version of myself. I think mm. I like to do things in a way that feels like I'm I'm doing my best, and I think that's something I've learned, and I I, I hope that I can support students with is that yeah. we're not asking for perfect polished versions of people. Part of your journey at being at Dundee and Angus College is about learning, obviously academically, so learning your subject. But it's also about learning who you are as a person and what Absolutely. your character is and what yeah. your strengths are. And um, that's a, that's a really wonderful part of my role is that I get to to talk to people about how how to do that because we know that mental health and well being um, can be affected in so many different ways and particularly over you know the last couple of years it's been crazy with all the, you know, the lockdown and our, the restrictions for some people they've actually you know they've they've um they've found it a positive they've enjoyed that time yeah, out totally. you know, they've reflected on what's important in their life and and they've slowed down a little for other people it's been really really challenging so again it's about taking people as we find them taking them at face value and working with them you know keeping them at the center of this process and um it's uh, yeah, seeing those changes is incredible, I and think, that means that I can sort of you know feel 
feel sort of positive and, and I think that's a big thing is being positive and if I can see those positive changes in other people then it, you know it, it feels good it's nice to be able to, to help make a difference and, and, and that's that's exactly it and it's, it, you hit on a really key point there I feel uh, when you're talking about like you know there's a curriculum and there's a study and that's what you go to college to do but there's all the other stuff and that's where I think learner engagement student services uh, student association come in it's, it's it's that's what makes your college experience a, a, a positive experience you know it's all the other bits in between mm-hmm. um, I mean day you could just go to college ignore everything literally go to the classroom write out your essays do your exams and go straight home again and not speak to anybody not do anything but that's not a typical college experience no for anybody no. that's not what <laughs> anybody wants there's all the other stuff involved and that's where that's where we come in you know and, that, and that's where all that comes to life. Um, okay, so random question time for you, uh, Rosie. <laughs> um, as we as we do, just throw these. I'm scared, Jason. Yeah, it's, okay. it's not that bad. If you, if you, <laughs> um, I'm just going to ask you quite what I've been asking uh, all week, actually. And it's if you were to be a superhero, if I was to make a superhero for for a day, what superpower would you have and why? Oh, goodness me. <sighs> I was going to go with the obvious, which would be to fly, but actually, no, I think it would be time travel. Okay. Um, and that's probably because I'm quite a reflective person, mm-hmm. as in that I think about things a lot. So I kind of, I go over things in my head before I do them. I like yeah. weird. Um, but then after that, I think back and I think, how did that go? How could I have changed it? How could I have made it better? So for me, if I had the time travel, I could nip back in time and anything that I needed to, to tweak or to just, just, Perfect. I, I, I like how you linked that, <laughs> that. To, your, to, your refle- to your reflection. Just remember the butterfly effect. That's all. You know, you might you, you might have a ripple effect in the future. Would, yeah, yeah. would you go the other way though? Would you travel into the future to find Ooh. out what's going to happen? If you because you've got the ability here. Yes, because as much as I am uh, very patient with other people, I'm not patient in myself, and I like to, you know, I like to know what's happening. I like mm. to see the end result. So yes, I probably would uh, want to go forward into the future and and actually for my own children as well, make sure that they're behaving and doing what they're <laughs> Make sure they're, they're, they're happy and they're doing it. <laughs> it, it, it always gives an interesting insight into people, that one question. Uh, also, a um, couple, couple of random ones for you here, just to say, the split decision ones. So are you coffee or tea? Oh, tea. I don't like tea. coffee. I don't like coffee at all. I wish I did because I would. I could do with the, the caffeine boost at times, but no. So you're very much I'm a tea. Like I've, got, I've got my week up here. So, Go for yeah. it. Have a, have a little drink. Because we like the stripes. Yeah. Oh, the clash. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. Uh, a quiet night in or a big night out? Oh, goodness me. Uh, now quiet night in. Used to love a big night out, but getting on a bit so I think, yeah, all the restrictions I think I've realized that actually there's nothing I like more than you know getting the jammies on and getting some nice food and watching a good film so I, I think we've all gone that way hibernation I mean, mode isn't it maybe the young people wouldn't agree I don't know maybe we're showing our age a bit here but I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> okay. kind of with you on that one now and then probably some of my mates would be watching this they'd be like yeah I definitely agree but he's, he's never out know, the union was a was a was a, a hot spot for for me um yeah and like you said earlier though Jason it's it's a the experience of studying um, whether you're at college or at uni. It, some people want to just yeah do their studies, keep themselves to themselves. But yeah. I certainly loved the the social element and was was always involved in, uh, in different I, things. I, so. I, I, I've I've got to say, I mean, it's just carried through to me now as well. You know, I'm connected to so many different groups and involved in so many different conversations with different people, and that's what I thrive on as well. Yeah. Um, and, and it's kind of like that. So last one for you then, beat uh, beat all your city break. Beach holiday. Beach holiday? Yeah, again, I think uh, as I'm getting, getting on a bit, I like to kind of go and find out the history and the, you know, the culture of places. But I actually do love m- nothing more than just being in the sunshine, switching off. And, um, it's that feeling, isn't it? It's like you're just lying on the lounge and the, and the skin's making your, the sun's making your skin just warm up and you're just lying there and it's just... You might have a book or you might just be doing nothing. It's that. It's funny because that is the exact feeling that my wife describes that she's missing. It's that feeling on the day one of just getting on the sun lounger and just relax. Absolutely. Switching our brains off because we're not very good at doing that. I think it's, we're we're busy, busy and, you know, we've got all these different 
areas of our lives that we try and and that's part of well-being you know mental health is good and strong but we've all got a, a sense of self-care duty there so well this um, is exactly the point of self-care just when you put that in there uh, we've got uh, an interview tomorrow morning with susan mcavoy uh, who also uh, works at the college but has her own mindfulness um, courses that she runs and um, um, we're going to be kicking one of them off we did one um around about november last year october uh -huh. november i think it was and we're waiting on another course in February. So that's going to be all centered around not just the ability to remain present, but on breath work as well. So again, it's a huge thing. Like breathing's become this huge topic now as well when it comes to self-care. So it, it's all this stuff, isn't it? It's, be, it's being aware of like who you are, what you enjoy, and just and embracing that, you know, because actually all the questions I was asked you there, the 50-50s split the room questions, but it's and it changes in time or it changes depending on what your your mood state is or how you're feeling or what you've gone through because for us like right now um going on a city break i agree with you like I, I feel like i've done so many different parts of scotland and england now over the last two years it's like <laughs> i just want to go abroad and like just like yeah. Stay, yeah, yeah the hard aren't the staycations are actually quite they're quite hard to uh, i don't know how you find it but yeah, and I take my children camping. Um, <laughs> I, I love it, but I, I kind of need a holiday when I come back. Well, that's my point. Like, <laughs> we've, we've got the three dogs, and um, you know, every holiday we've had is a staycation. We've taken the dogs with us. And what I don't think we realised was when we went uh, on holiday abroad before, the dogs stayed at home, and that was actually the relaxing part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cover their ears if they're around, you know. But... No responsibilities. But, and that's the thing is we know that we have, all, you know, a huge part, uh, portion of our student community um, are parents or yeah. they could be uh, carers. Um, and these additional responsibilities is that we, we know that students don't just appear in college and that that's, you know, their head is clear and ready to learn. There sometimes has to be a, you know, a bit of support around, you know, just to, sort of decompressing and unpacking a lot of what's going on. And that's why, you know, the services that we have exist, because yeah. we want students to, to come here and to enjoy their learning and to feel able to do it. And, um, you know, given that bit of time and support, it, um, just to, to kind of just get yourself into a good place and get your head um, feeling settled and you know holidays are a, are a wonderful way to do that whether they be at home or you know locally or abroad or whatever but you know it's sometimes it's almost like sort of taking a holiday from your your, your day to day thought processes and there's loads of ways we can do that loads of ways going out for a walk you know seeing your pals getting them tunes on yeah. TikTok well we're having a chat about that earlier we were we? I, I don't yeah. understand it no, I don't, no I'm, I'm too old I'm not going to fit enough but yes we were talking about it and uh, yeah so in terms of like uh, all those services we're talking about, if anybody's listening there and going, what are they? I want to get involved. Okay, so get in touch with Learner Engagement, obviously, um, mm -hmm. and, and on this channel here, which is, you know, at the Student Wellbeing Facebook page, drop a message on there or drop an email to the same address. Uh, go onto our YouTube channel, Learner Engagement, check out all the stuff on there or pop into the Gardine office, see myself or Kingsway or our both. Same with student services as well. If you want to get in touch directly with Rosie, uh, you can do so, but there's also the whole student services team across three campuses as well. Um, so they're there and also the student association also as well. I've also got other social media ch channels, same as ourselves to get in touch with. And also you can contact the team there direct on any of the campuses. So all the services are there, but it just would not be anywhere near enough time to try and describe all the things that we're doing for the student experience. So they can collectively see them. On their in my DNA app as well, my DNA Life app, the, the, the main app for your students. That's where you're going to get all your information as well. So stuff's posted up there daily, periodically, where you go on to check your timetables and your bursaries on the main news feed there. Um, that's where all that information is posted up as well. Um, yeah, so if they're thinking think about what are these services, that's where you're going to see it all. Uh, it's all starting to pre-populate in the comments below at the moment, all the different places where you can get in contact with us. Because uh, if you're sitting there trying to write down everything I've just said, good luck, <laughs> good luck to you. <laughs> I hope this is subtitled. <laughs> so, um, keep asking, isn't it? Uh, it's absolutely. Um, and what about? Uh, was there anything that I missed, uh, Rosie? Any anything there? No, I think um, like you were saying, there's there's various routes into support, um, and there's different levels of it. You know, sometimes it's people. Um, might come to us with a very very specific support need and it might be that we have to look at you know some of our 
uh, external supports and um, more sort of specialised yep. and, and that's something that we're very good at is that we, we can link students up with with specialised supports out in the community whether yes. that's to do with health or housing or um, oh goodness me there's a whole a whole wide range um, there's lots also, of different a, a, a kind of externals that we work with aren't there because I mean even uh, and between ourselves we also refer between ourselves as well because like I said I run the after hours club that's a really good example of something that you might come to me and go you know i've got someone who'd be interested in that great send them over and mm -hmm. vice versa there might be somebody that has a conversation with me at one of these clubs and it, it seems appropriate to have a conversation with yourself or someone in your team yeah and, and it gets so it kind of works both ways absolutely and i think you saying that that both ways and it's about us um knowing our what's out there in the college are staff so yeah. that we can direct students. So, I mean, I've worked with students that have come with very low mood or they've been feeling quite um, quite down, just a bit kind of isolated. Mm -hmm. And they'll, they'll come and they'll, they'll do some sort of one-to-one -one support sessions um, with student services. But actually where they find the biggest differences and changes are is that maybe when we feed them in or we suggest to them to come and speak to you guys at Learner Engagement or yeah. the Student Association and vice versa, if you guys are seeing you know, students that you think you could do with, a, you know, some more individualised support. Yeah, exactly, like yeah. Because that's a big part of what our team do as well. Uh -huh. um, and it's about having these conversations. And I think the one thing I always say to students is never be afraid to, to have the conversations. Don't be afraid to ask the questions because, there, I mean, it's a cliche, but there is no such thing as a stupid question. Um, if, that's if such a good phrase. You don't know. We but find that, out. We always that's ask. the best, the best, the best one ever. I, I, I particularly live by that mantra as well. There is no such thing as a stupid question. I will always be that guy in a team meeting that probably in my previous role probably frustrated life out my boss, but I just be like that. Ah, sorry, explain that again. Like, is it? And is you know, there's just there's no such thing as a stupid question because if you're thinking it, someone else is thinking it, but you but you had the guts to say it. <laughs> and I bet people in these setups whether it be on a meeting like you say or whether a student's in class and somebody just sticks their hands up and asks that question you're probably sitting there thinking oh i'm so glad they asked yeah that. relief <laughs> like, oh, yeah. So, yeah and that's part of like you said earlier on what motivates me people talking connections you yeah. know just um having that that honesty to kind of say you know and, and it's okay to be you know a bit vulnerable and to say i don't understand this or i'm confused or i'm overwhelmed and i think you know we all have to kind of to, to, to play our part in looking after each other whether it be staff or students or, or, or you know the wider community and um everybody's got their role to play and i think that's what's that's wonderful is that from you know all of the staff that keep this 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 wonderful community going, you know, our catering staff and our facility staff, and yeah. everybody's got a role to play. Family, in. really, the call it DNA family, and that's that's why that is what it feels like. It genuinely does. Um, and then, so just to leave our audience with a couple of things that, that uh, certainly quite powerful things you've said today. Uh, be the best version of yourself. I think that's uh, absolutely brilliant advice. If I was to add to that myself, I'd say be the best version of yourself because everybody else is already taken. So yep. that, that would be my little <laughs> add-on to that. And also, you're one about, yeah, don't be afraid to ask a stupid question because there's no such thing as a stupid question. I think mm -hmm. to leave uh, those two phrases, if you live by those mantras, I think they're fantastic and um, really motivational as well. And where will we see you then? If the students are thinking, will we see you walking about Gardine, Ardroth, Kingsway potentially? Yeah, like I say, I, I tend not to be up at Kingsway so much, mm -hmm. um, but... Um, when I'm in Gardine, I'm based in student services, so just sort of beyond the help desk. Yeah. And in our growth, um, the student advice centre. Um, but often, like you say, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the rounds. So if you see me, please come and say hello. Although you'll probably see like this much of me with my mask on. But uh, um, that's good. Go. It's a good point actually, because I, I think I will. I'm sure people recognise me, but when you've got the mask on, it, it, it is, it can be like a bit difficult, but yeah. It's really important that we keep wearing the masks and that we keep, you know, <laughs> encouraging each other to do so if we forget, just to, to make sure that we are. But yeah, if you see if you see me on campus, please come say hi, come and ask questions. If you want to message me, um, um, it's just rosie.ivins at dundeeandangus.ac.com. UK, I think. So yeah, that sounds right. Didn't too many dots there, probably did. <laughs> we'll put it up in the comments. We'll put it yes. up in the comments. Yeah. Um, and I'm on Teams as well, obviously. So, yeah, I'm, I'm like I said, no such thing as a stupid question. If you're thinking about support, if you're thinking about, you know, just trying to make some positive changes and, and yeah, that being the best version of yourself, we know it's not always easy. We know that sometimes it, you can struggle. So it's just about taking those first steps sometimes and often just asking the question is 
starting on that journey. So yeah, please come come say hello, ask the questions, and yeah, speak Great up. Stuff. Find your voice. Find, your voice. find your voice. There you got three now. There's your three. <laughs> <laughs> find your voice. Minute, yeah. Roy, I mean, absolutely brilliant speaking to you this morning. Thank you oh, so much thank for you your for time. Having me. It's been I know great. you're very busy, so thank you so much for giving up that time. And no, yeah, no. Um, I will be um, hosting. I think we'll, this afternoon, guys, we've got a uh, Pauline Retty on uh, from Angus Council, who's going to be interviewed by John around the five ways to well-being. So keeping on that theme of uh, refreshers week and everything well-being. Uh, she got a break from me, which is always good. And uh, thanks again to Rosie, and uh, we'll see everybody later. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. And there we go.